All right, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications, and of course, participate in the conversation by commenting down below and upvoting the video itself. We're all about perspectives and commentary here, and we're going to do a little bit of baseball preview. The 2022 national champion Ole Miss Rebels will start in about a month. Lots of players that have moved on. There's no Kevin Graham, no Justin Bench, no Tim Elko. Some of those names we're used to. But a lot of names are going to be coming back. How you doing, Derek? Doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing quite well. I'm kind of looking forward to baseball season. Basketball isn't going particularly well. Coach Yo, yeah. Coach Yo does have the girls humming at the moment. But, yeah, baseball needs to hurry up and get started. Yeah, yeah. I've been ready for baseball for uh... – for quite a long time now, quite frankly, since uh, back towards the end of June, I was ready to get this thing rolling back again, you know, and kind of like you're opening there, talking about defending national champions. I'll, I'll never get tired of hearing that, but, you know, it's time to turn the page and, you know, start start our road to a repeat here. Yeah, and, you know, I just mentioned there's no Justin Bench, there's no Kevin Graham, there's no Tim Elko. What does the lineup actually look like for Ole Miss this year? Yeah, the lineup's going to be stacked again, man. You know, he, even without those guys, we have so many players coming back. You know, you, you start out with Jacob Jacob Gonzalez, the shortstop, the All-American. You know, he's he's in the conversation to be the number one overall pick in the MLB draft. He's that talented both defensively and offensively from the left side of the plate, you know. Uh, so so you get him back and, you know, you get the spark plug and, and Peyton Chatagnier, and every time you look at a lineup, both defensively and with the bats, you want to start up the middle seat. So see how you're going to look. And, man, Ole Miss is really solid there with those two at short and second. And then, you know, you, you get a good look at uh, Calvin Harris at, at catcher this year. You know, he's been blocked by Hayden Dunhurst the last couple of years, you know, here. And, uh, boy, he really came around and started swinging it well for us last year, especially in, in Omaha, you know. And, and that whole postseason run, he was really good earlier in the year at DA. He's played a little corner outfield for us, uh, as well as backing up Dunhurst and, you know, he had an injury there that kind of put him out a little bit. And then, uh, you know, once he got back in and latter part of the year when we need him, he, he really stepped up for us. So, you know, you'll have him at catcher. And center field's going to be the really interesting spot. You know, you've got T.J. McCants coming back, super, super talented guy. You know, went, went through a heck of a lot last year. You know, people didn't know it while the season was going on. But after the season ended, you kind of heard what all was going on just in his personal life, you know, and that uh, – and that's always tough for a young player to go through, you know, as uh, hard as baseball is, especially in the SEC, you know, to have to deal with that too. But but you saw how talented he was there in the postseason. He just come up with big hit after big hit for us. And, uh, but then, you know, you look and you've got this transfer coming in, Ethan Groff from Tulane. And, uh, you know, he's he's played center field his entire career. So maybe he, maybe he gets into center and you move TJ to left or vice versa. It'll be interesting to see how Mike ends up doing that. But, Ethan is a really, really good player. Hit 404 last year, a power speed guy, hit nine bombs, stole seven bases, I think it was. But uh, really, really good defender in center field, too. So, uh, you know, that's that's really nice to have him there with TJ. You got a lot of speed out there. And then in right field, the the big bopper, right, Kemp Alderman. You know, he's, he's got this huge cannon arm, which is perfect for a right fielder. Um, and, and you know what he can do with the bat. He's just sitting there. Everything he hits is over 110 miles an hour, it seems like. You know, he's just doubles and home runs all over the place. And apparently he couldn't get out this fall. He was, he was that good with the bat at the plate for us. Uh, so he's obviously coming back, and that's a big boost to our lineup too. Uh, but these these guys top to bottom should really swing it. I think the, the key position for us next year is figure out what we're going to do at third base. With Justin Bench going out, you know, we – we had Reagan Burford last year, you know, and he swung it okay, but he really, really struggled defensively for us over there. And then we bring in this Juco guy, Ethan Leeds, and, you know, he's another guy that's kind of that same mold. He can hit it all over the place. He's a super, super good hitter, uh, but kind of seems to struggle with the glove a little bit. You know, I think he had a an 854 uh, fielding percentage at third base last year before he transferred here. Uh, so that's – that's one thing that we need to see. Some somebody can get over there and and really man that hot corner defensively for us. That's that's a big deal for us right now. Yeah. Um, what about first base? Um, how do you replace Tim Elko? 
well, you're not going to play. You're not going to replace Tim Elko. You'll never replace him. He's probably the greatest player in Ole Miss history, not only what he meant to the team on the field, but off of it too. He's one of those generational type players and leaders more than anything. And, and that's something that we're really going to have to replace. And, uh, you know, Chatney and Gonzalez, those guys are going to have to step up from a leadership standpoint. But we ended up getting transfer Anthony Calarco from Northwestern. He's coming in. That's going to be your everyday first baseman, I would imagine. You know, he's, he's a big guy, really, really good, bad, 325 average, 1051 OPS. Uh, can, can really put it over the fence when he needs to, and he can just do a little bit of everything for us, and he's a really athletic big guy there at first base too. So that's something you'll – kind of see in the Tim Elko mold because Elko was that way at first base. He was that super athletic guy, you know, coming over from third base and playing first base for us. And, and so I think you'll see a lot of similarities between Calarco and Elko there, but, but I think that's your guy at first base for us. Okay. Now let's turn over to the pitching staff because Dylan DeLucia, this team does not win a national championship without him moving to the starting pitching number one spot. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Elliott is going to obviously move into that number one spot. He's he he's basically a Doug Nikhazy clone. It's amazing, yeah. like they're able to do stuff like that. But what does the pitching rotation starting out look like? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's kind of the same thing every year, you know. With uh, Mike Bianco, ever since he's been here, we really, we just turned turned out pitchers year after year, you know, and. Uh, Hunter Elliott's another one of those guys. We don't win the national championship without him either. I mean, he was just incredible. With, between him and Delucia, they come in and, you know, when in the regional and super regional formats with the top two guys, you know, if, if you win those first two games, you put yourself in a good position. That's what those two were able to do. So, yeah, Elliott's going to come back. He's going to start on Fridays for us, you know, with all the experience that he has, you know, Really, really good changeup. That's that's kind of his bread and butter, right? He's he's not going to blow you away with the fastball. It's it's a heavy fastball, but it's not one that's going to get up 94, 95 miles per hour. He's going to sit 89, 91, and he's going to work it off of that changeup that just absolutely disappears on you. And that's that's kind of his calling card. The Saturday game, right? That's that's what everybody's wondering. What are we going to do after Hunter Elliott on weekends? I'm telling you all right now, Grayson Saunier, the freshman coming in, the the big right-hander, he's going to be a dude for us. Um, he's got a big, big fastball. He consistently sits anywhere between 93 and 95 miles an hour, can run it up a little bit higher, um, but he has a slider that's going to make him a ton of money one of these days. Um, just just a really, really good pitch, real sharp break on it, 81, 84 miles an hour. It's not that real hard-biting slider you see from – from like Kate Horton, for example, last year national championship game, that kind of slider. It's not like that. It's it's more off speed to complement his fastball. Um, one thing I found interesting was a quote from Mike Bianco through fall ball this year, talking about Grayson Saunier. He said, "I don't remember a freshman ever pitching that well in fall here from week to week. Even Doug Nikhazy, Gunnar Hoagland, and Ryan Rawlison. He says he's been better than all three of those as a true freshman in fall ball so far this year. I mean this." This guy is a real dude. He's going to lock down Saturdays for us. Um, and it's one of those guys that Rebel fans better enjoy while he's here because he's not going to be here very long. Yeah. Um, Sunday, let's talk about the Sunday starter real quick. Uh, yeah, if if you made me guess, I would say probably Jack Doherty. I would think he probably has the inside track to get the Sunday job for us, which, I mean, or if you tell me Jack Doherty's our Sunday starter, you know, that's that's probably about as good as we've had in at least a decade in Oxford. You know, he's, he's really turned it around. Uh, last year in particular, especially when we got to the postseason, he, he had a really, really good run. You know, he's always had that real light fastball, and uh, he's he's always been able to throw it by people, and then that slider. You know, that's, that's kind of the M.O. of any Ole Miss pitcher. It doesn't matter what your arsenal is when you come to Oxford out of high school. While you're here, you're going to learn to throw a fastball and a slider, and then you can mix in a changeup if you want to. That's that's just kind of Mike Bianco and them's philosophy with the pitcher. Uh, but Doherty would be my guess for a Sunday starter. There are other options out there. Um, now, if you told me Josh Mallets was healthy and didn't have to have Tommy John surgery, I would go ahead and almost guarantee you would be do- Doherty on Sundays. But with his experience in the bullpen, you may have to use him a little bit more in a bullpen role and. And maybe look at some of these other freshmen or somebody like a uh, 
like an Xavier uh, Rivas that's, that's transferring in from D2 Indianapolis, you know, the lefty. He's kind of a crafty guy. Maybe that's somebody you could put in at Sunday if you have to move Doherty to the bullpen. Uh, but but they have a lot of arms, uh, a lot of really, really good freshmen. JT Quinn's another one. He's a really, really big kid, 6'6", 205 pounds, and uh, really, really good fastball. I mean, he runs it up there 95, 96 miles an hour with this – 84 to 85 mile an hour slider, a good, hard, sharp breaking slider. Um, that's that's a name that, that Ole Miss fans need to keep an eye on too because there's no doubt in my mind either in the rotation, whether it be the weekend, the midweek, or if we end up putting him into the bullpen and letting him work out of there, that's one guy that's going to make an impact for us this year. Yeah, who, who would be your players to watch um, for the season for the Rebs? Uh, yeah, kind of on the pitching side, you know, I already talked about Grayson Sonier just because he's a new guy, right? I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. one guy that you're going to want to watch. Uh, JT Quinn, uh, one really important piece I think is going to be Mason Nichols. You know, he, he pitched really well for us last year out of the bullpen. He has a lot of experience down there. That that may be where we go first to try to close games out since we've lost Mallets. Uh, and, and don't forget, you got Riley Maddox coming back more than likely at some point next year. You know, he's, he, he's probably not going to be ready for the start of the season, but he's been throwing off flat ground uh, a good bit here lately. You know, I think he started that about two, two and a half months ago, something like that. And, and he was really good for a freshman for us last year before he ended up having to have the surgery. So that's, that's another arm that we, we potentially have have in our in our bag we can pull out to to throw into that bullpen uh, you know and then will furnace you know i i know i talked about him with you back there in signing day and all that for for baseball you know he's he's a big big kid that that, that has a lot of power from the left side of the plate and then we got a freshman out of Tupelo that can really swing at mason morris and he's 6'5 220 pounds and he played shortstop back in uh, high school for Tupelo, you know, there he's more projected as a first base, possibly even third base because of how athletic he is, which could be really interesting considering we do have a hole there. If he's able to crack the line up there at third base, if he is indeed athletic enough to, to play it. Um, but he's he's got a real big bat, real, real big power potential. I mean, that's that's the guy that I think in, in a year or two, if he's not able to crack the line up this year, he most certainly will next year. And that's that's the name people need to keep an eye on, too, because he can really swing it, and he's a really big athletic kid. All right, um, looking at the SEC, give us some teams that we need to keep an eye on in the SEC before the season starts. Uh, yeah, LSU's going to be a problem. I mean, that's 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 going to be a problem for anybody in the entire country. With I mean, they're and look, it's all within the rules. They're, I have no issues with it whatsoever, but they decided after this year they were going out and they were going to try to buy them a College World Series championship in that transfer portal. You know, they, they brought in Tommy Tanks there, and he's going to pay, play third base for them. He hits it a ton, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's any any transfer out there that was worth their weight, LSU went and got them. Of course, they're always really good recruiting. And then you got Cruz there still. You know, he's – He's one of the top picks in next year's draft, too. So LSU is going to be a real big problem. Um, really, look at the West in general, man. I mean, LSU, A&M, you know Mississippi State's going to end up bouncing back. They're, they're one of those programs that's not going to stay down long. Uh, and, and, and then Auburn, you know, they're, they're, they've built a really good baseball program out there at Auburn and then Arkansas, too. You know, they're, they're always going to be a problem with Van Horn. Uh, but then you got Tennessee still and, and Vanderbilt and Florida. You know, this the SEC is going to be about as big of a bear as it's ever been in recent memory this year. I mean, there's teams I, – I can make a case for anybody besides Alabama winning the SEC West. That's how good it is this year. I mean, it's, it's going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. You're, you're, you're going to get a, a, a top-level game – day in and day out on weekends when SEC play starts. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, but, you know, you you better bring your lunch pail when you come play in the SEC this year. It's going to be a damn dogfight every single time you step out on the on the field. All right. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about your college basketball in one place. Plus hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Derek, thank you so much for stopping by. Like I said, I'm looking forward to baseball season, that first pitch going out. Oh, yeah, me too, man. Can't get here soon enough. All right, bud. Hi, toddy. All right, hi, toddy.